The concept of surface tension is essential when we want to understand phenomena in nature like the ability of water striders to remain on the surface of water without drowning or the water repellent properties of lotus leaves. The stability of soap bubbles, the dunking of cookies or sushi, the dripping of droplets, all these processes are determined by surface tension. But also human technologies like Teflon coated skillets, the stability of soap films or the water repellent features of rain jackets are feasible because of our understanding of surface tension. What is the origin of surface tension? Why do droplets sitting on surfaces form lenses or domes? How can we measure the surface tension? This sh short slideshow will answer these questions. The origin of surface tension can be found on a molecular level. In this picture, two molecules in the fluid L are depicted. One of them resides in the volume, the other at the interface to a second fluid G. Molecules attract each other. A molecule in the volume experiences the same attraction from all sides. It experiences a zero net force since it is pulled from all sides equally. However, a molecule at the interface to the fluid G does not experience the attraction from all sides equally. Thus, this molecule experiences a non-zero net force which macroscopically can be expressed by the surface tension. The surface tension always acts within the surface, meaning tangentially to it. The symbol for surface tension is gamma and its physical unit is newton per meter, meaning force per length. At the beginning this unit did not make too much sense to me, I could only relate it to a spring constant, but that picture did not help me understanding the meaning of surface tension. Thus, let's compare the surface tension with a more familiar physical quantity, the pressure P. The pressure has the unit newton per square meter. This unit seems more intuitive, it means simply the amount of force a gas in a container exerts onto a piston. We can multiply the unit of the pressure with the term meter over meter and obtain another perspective on the pressure as a unit. We obtain joule per cubic meter, which corresponds to an energy density. That means multiplying the pressure with a volume gives us the energy in this volume. Now let's do the same with the unit of the surface tension. We obtain a surface specific energy. This means multiplying the surface tension with the surface area gives us the amount of energy in that surface. The surface tension can thus be seen as a two-dimensional analog to the pressure. Now, let's take a look at the droplet of a liquid L sitting on the surface of a solid S surrounded by a gas, G. There are three surface tensions involved. One between the liquid droplet and the gas, another between the gas and the solid, and last, the tension between the liquid and the solid. At the edge of the droplet, all three phases, gas, liquid and solid, meet. At this point we set up a force balance by drawing the surface tensions tangentially on the, to their corresponding surfaces. Between the liquid gas and the liquid solid liquid surface tension we introduce the three phase contact angle theta. We now note that on the horizontal axis, the surface of the solid, all forces must balance each other. Otherwise the droplet would be moving since it would experience an external force. In this simple manner the Young-Laplace equation can be written down. How can we now measure the surface tension between, for instance, a liquid and a gas? This can be done by the so-called Wilhelmi plate method. A plate with the width L and thickness T is immersed into a liquid A. A liquid meniscus will climb up the wall of the plate. You might be surprised, but there is actually a force F pulling the plate into the water. This force arises from surface tension and we can measure it with a scale. Let's look at the immersed place from a rotated perspective. Now we see that at the edge of the meniscus the same force balance can be set up as for our sessile droplet in the picture on the left. The X component of the liquid gas surface tension is trying to pull the plate into the water. By considering the contact angle we can calculate the force acting on the plate. The X component of the surface tension has to be multiplied by the entire parameter of the plate to obtain the resulting force. Thus, by measuring the force F pulling down the plate, we can calculate the surface tension. 